Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, I want to take a look at how to add hanging cables like this to a rig that has an inverse kinematic on it, or really any armature for that matter, and have the cables hang according to the armature. So let's get into it. Here I've got a simple three bone IK rig, where we have bones one, two, and three, with an IK target of this end bone. If you want more information on setting up an IK arm like this, check out this video. What I want to have happen is I want to create a procedural cable that runs from this bone to this bone to this bone. But I want to do it with as little work as possible. So in this video, we're going to look at how to combine an armature with geometry nodes. Now, I'm going to add a mesh starting at the first point I want my cables to start which is in this little pocket of this bottom bone. From right there, I'll add a mesh single vert. If you don't have the mesh single vert, you'll need to enable the extra mesh items add-on that comes with Blender. I'm gonna extrude this vertex up to the second pocket, and then extrude that one up to the last pocket. This gives me a mesh with three vertices and two edges. The next thing I wanna do is parent this new mesh to my armature. So with that mesh selected, I'll shift click on my armature, press control P, and I'm gonna choose armature deform with automatic weights. Automatic weights are gonna work perfectly in this situation because for each vertex, there's a single bone and those vertices are right in the middle of those bones. So the automatic weight should apply very nicely. If I go into pose mode and grab my target, I should be able to move it and I can see that my mesh is stretching the way I want it to. Now that we have these three points defined and they're moving according to our armature, we can add some geometry nodes to make this more interesting. There's one special geometry node that you're gonna need to download if you wanna follow this example. If you haven't already, you can visit github.com slash johnnygizmo slash node underscore assets and you can download these special nodes that I've created. I've made them freely available. One of these nodes is called Catenary. So if you download these nodes using the download zip button here or cloning the entire repository so that you can keep it up to date as I add new things, if you extract those into one of your asset folders, you can access this Catenary node as an asset. So here I'll select this line and give it a new geometry node tree. And then from an asset window, I'm gonna drag my catenary node into the node editor. I would recommend if you're doing this tutorial to use Blender 3.3 beta or 3.3 alpha. That way you'll have all of the compatible things that you need. I'm gonna drop this node on my line here. Initially nothing's gonna happen because this is a mesh and the catenary node needs a curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a mesh to curve node before my catenary node. Once you've done this, you'll have some control over the droopiness of this cable. The next thing we're gonna need is some thickness on this cable because currently this is just a single curve and it won't render properly. So if I come over here and after my catenary node, add a curve to mesh node and then add a curve circle node as the profile curve, you'll see that I have a single cable. Of course, we're gonna to wanna to add some interest to this. So let's use some other options that are available to us in geometry nodes to duplicate these cables. We're gonna take our curve coming out of our mesh to curve, and we're gonna use the duplicate elements node on it. We'll put this node in spline mode because we're working with curve splines. And then we can increase the amount of curves that we want. There are 10 cables here, but they're all getting the same settings from the catenary node. In order to separate them, we can use the randomness of our catenary node to get that effect. If I turn up the random scale a little bit, and then my random max, you'll see that they spread out. Now this only affects the droopiness of the cables, and we may want them to spread out side to side. That's pretty easily done by using a set position node. And then we can adjust the offset for each cable. We're gonna add a vector combine XYZ node and plug that into the offset. 
What we want to do is affect the Y position for each cable. I'm going to use the duplicate index and plug that into the Y. Now, this isn't exactly what we were going for, but it's pretty close. We just need these to be closer together. So in order to get these to squeeze in together, we just need to adjust this duplicate index to be something smaller. We'll go ahead and use a math node to do that. If we set it to multiply, we'll be able to close this gap in. And then if we move the whole thing over a little bit, we'll have our cables. Now because of the way that the catenary node works, as we move this, our cables are going to adjust accordingly. One little extra thing, if you're going to use this in an animation, let's say I've animated it like this. While the overall droopiness of the cables looks good, there's no side to side motion. One way we could get around that is if we go into our geometry nodes and keyframe the gravity of our catenary node. If we have our catenary node selected and we go back to our animation tab, here I've changed to the graph editor, you'll see the X, Y, and Z of our gravity. For this, we're going to want the Z to stay the same, but we want the X and the Y to move a little bit. One way to fake this would be to choose the X, open up the end panel, and add a modifier. I'm just going to use the built-in function of the sine wave. If I do this, we see that it moves way too much. So if I lower the amplitude and lower the phase multiple, that adds just a little bit of jiggle. Then if I do the same thing to the Y, that gives just a tiny bit of extra motion. While it might not be physically accurate, it'll at least give a little bit of extra secondary movement for a tiny bit of realism. I hope you find this idea helpful, and I hope you can use it in one of your projects. If you like, be sure to download my GitHub repository and try out some of the nodes that I've put in there, or extend them and do some new cool stuff with them that I haven't even thought of. At the very least, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.